Hey, everybody. I'm Curtis Galloway from Google, uh, the low-level operating systems team. And uh, so I'm here to give an update on Android and RISC-V uh, and hopefully prompt some discussion. So if you've been in the RISC-V session this morning, some of this may sound familiar. Um, I'll start with the status. Uh, it's pretty good. Android can build and run in an emulator now uh, using the same mechanisms as other platforms. So I'm sorry, Betty, from earlier, we're adding to your matrix. Um, we're working hard on getting all of the tests running, uh, but they're not part of the mainstream uh, CI yet. So a vector crypto, bit manipulation uh, extensions have landed. Vector is in progress, mostly because of um, the performance in QMU is uh, not what you want. NDK canaries are available also, and Cuttlefish is using QMU 8.1 uh, with Vector uh, available in there. So you can test Vector. Uh, performance obviously is not really useful to test in QMU. And uh, GFX stream support is added for better local graphics uh, performance. And uh, importantly, we're working to uh, land stuff upstream first for the libraries that are in use. So it's, um, I have someone on my team that is actively working on upstream vector and various things, for instance. So uh, upstream is important. We're trying to get that straight from the get-go. I think uh, the question we get the most is, what is up with the ABI? Um, and the answer is probably not what you necessarily want to hear. It's a work in progress because um, the important decisions on extensions in the space are still happening. Um, we don't want to converge on an ABI that is either uh, has something that I get removed or doesn't have something crucial. So we want to make sure that there's consensus on that before being uh, really adamant about what the ABI is going to be. But having said that, um, this will look familiar if you've seen Lars's uh, presentation from earlier this year in uh, July. So the, the support of ABI will be added uh, for 64-bit, no 32-bit, sorry. Um, and all supported instruction sets will be a combination of probably RVA 22 plus uh, some set of ratified extensions, probably vector, vector crypto, um, since those are pretty important for performance. Uh, we're intentionally omitting SIMD and scalar crypto from that list of things that are required. And we'll also require that um, Android compatible devices are conforming hardware. So correctly implement the ISA, don't do anything broken or weird, don't misuse any of the encoding space uh, for future extensions to do your thing. Uh, we want to promote compliance with fully compliant hardware. And we will only ever support uh, ratified RISC-V extensions. So I think we can say that for now. And that, that has been a message that's been pretty consistent. Um, since earlier this year, at least. So the hard part is if you're trying to do stuff with vector in particular, it's hard to tell on emulators. So interesting boards now are starting to become available. Uh, I mentioned the, the K230 because Nathan is here and has one if you wanna play with it. Oh, you, you gotta give me your, your visual uh, prop here. We, we have a one in a nice 3D printed case, yeah. Look, a box, a cardboard box. <laughs> um, this is useful for testing libraries and doing work on that. It's not really useful for running Android, but uh, I'm pretty hopeful that more boards are gonna come really soon now, uh, probably early next year maybe, and uh, Rise uh, in the RISC-V International Forum is working on a board farm. We already have the, the CI going if uh, you want to use that, but a board farm will be a lot more useful. So we're working on a proposal for that uh, to enable people to actually test things on real hardware, which will be a lot more interesting when there's more of it. And so if you want to figure out what's going on at any given moment, 
go to the GitHub page for uh, Android Risk Five. Try it out. You can download it and run it. Uh, you can look at the issues list, um, and there's a uh, open source blog post that I link to in here that uh, has some more detail on uh, the tooling and kind of what we're thinking on that. And for Risk Five generally, there's an Android SIG mailing list. That is where all the discussion happens. So all of this is happening in the open on the mailing list, uh, on the GitHub uh, issue list. So you can see everything that's happening um, and see all the code that's going in. And uh, I would encourage people who are interested in, in Risk Five on Android to check out Rise and try to get involved with that because that's more about uh, enabling the Risk Five software ecosystem generally, which will help Android and everything else. Um, the wiki on the Rise webpage has more info on the working groups that are going on there, including the board farm. So if you have boards and you want to farm them, please show up and get involved. And uh, also help your favorite project do Risk Five uh, optimization. Uh, like we're working on all that stuff in upstream. So um, anything you do in there is going to help Android and everything else. Um, any questions so far? Any, anything that I've missed? For Vector Crypto, are you referring to the, the NIST algorithms, the Chinese algorithms, or, or both? Like, like Vector Crypto is a lot of, as a family of extensions. Right, right. Um, I, I, Nathan, do, you, do we have the list of exactly which ones? Uh, for vector crypto that we're which, which which of the many vector crypto uh, flavors are we actually using I think just the like NIST and I don't know offhand yeah hi um so uh, as Curtis said we're targeting ratified extensions so that'd be vector crypto or um, vector 1.0 when you said vector crypto which of the extensions in vector crypto yeah. right I don't have that that offhand. Um, I believe that we do have uh, that list public somewhere, and I can get that to you. Yeah, but um, I, I think I think it's in one of the issues on GitHub. I could be wrong. I, yeah, I think if you go to the so GitHub.com/slash um, Android Risk uh, Risk Five Sixty Four has a list of all the open issues, and in there includes the the crypto stuff. Yeah, if I I. Don't want to say and be wrong, um, because what I remember may not be correct. Um, any other questions? Yeah, there's a bunch of kind of like issues on there that are still open, like more ASLR bits, uh, shadow stack support, which is partly landed, um, and um, crypto optimizations in the kernel, uh, missing hardware breakpoint support, um, distinguishing read write faults in user space. So um, there's a bunch of stuff that's that's being actively worked on, um, if people are interested. Yeah. Yeah. So um, maybe I missed it, but did you say you had some reference hardware you're aiming for, or some dev boards that we may be? Sort of... We have one. Oh yeah, that, that's the one you were mentioning. Okay. <laughs> yeah. We're so uh, the the goal is so we're not doing any like internal Android builds on particular hardware. Um, okay. Through Rise, we're interested in trying to get a board farm going. But just having some of these around, since you can just buy them now, sure. um, that's kind of what we're using them for, for like sitting on your desktop. And, and it's something that, you know, if we're trying to upstream right. uh, vector improvement, at least we have something that you can say, well, try it on this. And we, so, here's the improvement uh, we saw. And let me just push my question a bit further down, because I, I know that some of the dev boards that, that are listed for Android are maintained by Lenaro. Sort of in my mind, there's sort of like a disconnect there. But <laughs> oh well, we should uh, totally talk. So uh, this is yeah. So who would be doing that? <laughs> which which part? The so, like the, the supporting some some risk five boards. Since I would sort of conclude that maybe the Lenar would not be the party doing that. So who would be doing that? For you? Oh uh, well, that would be Rise that okay. would decide what you know. So the proposal that's sort of in draft form. That's one of the questions. Is like what boards get to go in and you know do they need to be completely rva 22 so rise not equal to android um 
it's just more that the, the K230 is like the first easily available one that has Vector 1.0 okay. that you can just go order and get it in some reasonable time. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. Five more minutes. You all are like, really know how Risk 5 on Android is going now and, and think it's good. That's good. You should be tougher on me. <laughs> Anybody from the Risk Five crowd wants to address specific questions? Yeah, we got one. I might flip it around and say, what questions do you have for kind of the upstream community or that that would be helpful? Um, yeah, what like what do you want to see Android do in the short term? Right, like do people have if people have opinions on what Android should support, you know, or like strong feelings on like which of the vector crypto flavors are important to do. I think it's a good moment to, to chime in. Uh, is the kernel that you guys are using uh, based off of ACK or pure upstream? And if it's based off of ACK, are, are there any Android specific patches that like are maybe risk five specific? We're trying, it's ACK um, and we're trying really, really, really hard to not have any so the, the goal is to be, you know, completely mainline on things. Um, the hard part is, you know, because the hardware is all landing imminently, um, there's going to be vendor stuff, I'm sure. But uh, we really want to try to encourage everything to be upstream first. Um, that's super important. Like, I'm personally relatively new to Android, and I, I hear a lot all the time about how important it is to like minimize the number of patches. So currently we're um, at zero for generic uh, RISC-V support. Cool. Yeah. No, I think we're Hi, doing it wrong. This is uh, Trilog. Uh, just want to catch up on the string, string uh, library kind of optimizations like memcopy or something. We had a long time back to do that in the ARM. Uh, so pretty much interested in what you are doing and optimizing these libraries for Bionic and the, I don't know, there was an extension for these two specific instructions, but are we looking into that, optimizing these paths? We are. And Nathan, do you want to comment on that more specifically? Yeah, so I can answer that question also. Um, we have landed uh, optimized versions of the string and memory routines using the vector extension. Um, those are currently landed. A lot of them are patterned after some of the recommendations. So they're, they're already there. Um, most of the bionic functions and, and um, existing are optimized. So those are already done. Thank you, Nathan. When you say that the implementation has to be conforming, is that from strictly a, a user space point of view, or are you, are you, you know, is that a requirement extend to say privilege mode as well? Um, I would say uh, both. I mean, I don't know if you want to do something crazy in user space, it doesn't seem like, I don't know. Nathan, do we have an opinion on that? I'm sorry to keep throwing things back to you, but. Um, I don't want to uh, make an incorrect what, what position. Was the, what was the question about? Uh, for conforming, uh, like hardware conforming to the spec, do we care more about kernel or user space? I mean, um, I guess the the only thing I can kind of add there is that you know um, Android will support. Um, we'll have some ABI at some point that will be mostly for application. Conformance, and then you know if, if there are uh, devices that have other conforming extensions, you know that are for platform, perhaps they could be used there, just like we have currently with with ARM, where if there are other other ARM um, operations that are just on the platform, maybe, maybe the platform could take advantage of it. But um, you know we we are going to add a conformance test of some some sort to the CDD as as yeah. Curtis said. I mean, I think that's that's something if like, oh, we have a, a great idea about that, then I would encourage you to have a conversation about like what you'd like to see on that. Because otherwise, I think it's to everyone's benefit to have things conform to the, the published standards so that we don't fragment the ecosystem. 
All right. Thanks, everybody.